Flexner. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the notice to the public statement? Would you like me to take roll call first? Uh, yes, please do. Uh -huh. Council Member Gomez? Good afternoon. Council Member Kennedy? Here. Council Member Kennedy? Here. Council Member Negretti is expected to be approximately 15 minutes late. Mayor Pro Tem Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. Now I'll read the notice to the public. Persons who wish to address the council on an agenda item are requested to complete one of the white cards which have been placed on the agenda table in the lobby. In compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, anyone who requires reasonable accommodations to participate in a meeting may request assistance and or receive the agenda in an alternative format by contacting the Victorville City Clerk's Office no later than 72 hours prior to the meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per individual or less as deemed necessary by the mayor, depending upon the number of individuals desiring to speak. All communications are to be addressed directly to the council, not the members of the audience. This is a professional business meeting and courtesy and decorum are expected. Please refrain from any, loud, from any debate between audience and speaker making loud noises or engaging in any activity which might do, be disruptive to the meeting. Thank you. Now, please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and we will have Council Member B. Kennedy, please. Join me in pledging allegiance to our great flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> And we have one agenda item, item number one, three budget workshop establishing the annual budget for fiscal year 2017-2018. The uh, recommendation, any recommendation is at the uh, discretion of the city council. And uh, I'll turn this over to our city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Um, this is our first uh, pre-budget workshop. Uh, we label it a pre-budget because the budget is not ready yet. Um, it is very much draft. Uh, it uh, is essentially balanced at this point, which is uh, good news when compared to this time last year. Our first budget meeting, we were just a little bit over a million dollars uh, uh, still needing work, I'll say, um, which is typical at this point in time. So. Um, if uh, any council members have actually read through the entire budget or been able to flip through the entire budget even, you've probably uh, seen more of it than I have. Um, I've been uh, somewhat involved at a, at a high level at this point, but I still have to review some of our major revenue sources, the uh, uh, cost allocation plan, uh, as well as some departmental budgets. So um, there was a request a couple of years ago to get the council involved at an earlier point in time. So that's why we did that last year and uh, this year as well. Uh, so uh, in, in an effort to keep us on track, we have two hours. Uh, right now, based on schedules of council members, it appears our next opportunity to meet on the budget and have all five of you present isn't going to be until June 6th. Uh, so in the interest of uh, time, uh, Last year, we, we kind of ran out of time. Um, I would ask that we uh, kind of do an, an overview uh, of the budget at first, kind of high level, uh, and take any, any general questions, uh, and then have each of the department heads uh, run through his or her department um, to give uh, a brief overview of the things that are occurring in, the, in that department. Um, and uh, then we take questions after that point. So we can at least get through each of the department head presentations uh, before we dive into the details. Certainly all of them will still be around to, to answer questions if you can get through that. So um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to John Mendiola who will be handling the first piece of this and trying to do his best to keep us all on track and then also uh, assisting uh, and uh, with especially some of the overall uh, revenue projections is Christina James who will be uh, speaking a little bit later. So John, it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Uh, thank you for joining us for this pre-budget workshop. Uh, like Mr. Robinson said, this is really a point of view on the budget set. It's really raw. We really haven't had time to go through it in very much detail. That's why we're coming to you guys as a workshop to get your input, which uh, we value very much. 
um, on what direction you want us to go in. So as Mr. Robinson said, I'll go ahead and do a quick little overview. Um, but before that, I want to make some introductions. Uh, introduce on my left is Christina James. She's one of our finance managers. To my right, Joe Haggard. He's our information technology officer. And to his right is Josie Trevino. She's our HR officer. This is the main part of the budget team that gave direction to support staff to help us pull these numbers together and get these uh, figures for your review as we go forward with the budget. Um, like Mr. Robinson said, I'll do a quick overview and then, then I'll turn it over to Christina to do uh, some of the budget summaries and general fund overviews for the revenues and expenditures. And then we're going to go through to keep this moving, as the city manager has stated, we'd like to get through all the department heads in this meeting uh, to give their quick overview and then to save your questions to the very end so you can have time to write down questions you, you uh, particularly want to, to talk to each of the department heads and then we'll bring them back up to address those questions for you, okay? So with that said, we'll go ahead and pull up the quick slide. I'll go ahead and turn that on. So Christina's going to do a really quick overview. Um, this is just a main um, summary of the overall budget for the entire city. Um, the projected revenue for 2018 is $201.9 million, and the overall expenditures for the city are projected to be $235.5 The main revenue for the city is that 40% is charges for service and taxes at the expenditures. Christine, you're going to have to speak okay. on <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of us don't have great hearing to begin with. <laughs> I got hearing aids on and I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> um, the main expenditures for the city are operations and maintenance and personnel. So um, one of the big things that you notice on the revenues, um, you know, 40 percent charges for services, and you look at the 201.9 million revenue projected. If you look at the expenditures and you pull that capital um, number out of there, which capital ends up to be 41.6 million out of the 235, you're looking at um, expenditures of about 194 million dollars, which is we're in a good spot right now with the rev um, with the revenues to the expenditures going into this first budget workshop. You know, just like Mr. Robinson said before, last year we came in here about a million point, one point one down uh, where we needed to find those uh, revenues to, to pick up for the expenditures. But this year we're in a really good place. There's a lot of flexibility as we go through the budgets to gain your input um, as we go through the departments and see wha what um, priorities that you guys have that we can fit into the budget and, and fund for that. Do we really have to wait until the end to ask questions? Uh, you know, you don't have to. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you show a budget that's, and you just glance at it from a person who just walked in the room and says, oh my goodness, it's $34 million out of balance. I mean, why would you show it? Well, it's a capital, but why show the capital? Why not show a capital based on income and then have optional? If the income comes in, we have this. If it doesn't come in, we don't. Because it looks like you have a really out of balance budget. For First slide. We're up thirty-four million dollars. That doesn't make any sense. Well, one of the problems with an overview like this is that it's we don't live in the world of an overview. We live yeah. in the world of right. buckets. I know. And every one of those individual buckets has to be looked at individually. So this is interesting, but not very. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you take yeah. in consideration yeah. the capital, a lot of the capital does get carried over from year to year. Um, some of the major projects that happen on the roads. Uh, or over at SCLA, um, some of those things will carry from fiscal year to fiscal year, so that will also um, inflate that capital number and inflate your expenditures going into the budget season. So the expenditures by fund type, um, again, your enterprise funds are going to make up the bulk of it, about 115 million, and your uh, basically your general fund is going to pick up about 59 million of that. And then it goes into your capital from all funds. Again, it's 41.6 million for the capital. Your special revenues are at 16.1 million, and then your fiduciary funds, you know, which consist of your CFDs and successor agencies, are at about 4.2 million. 
again, here's the recap of some of the capital improvement um, projects that are planned for fiscal year 18. Um, one of the big things that you can see pulled out of there is the streets at 16.3 million. Um, and I know we've been heavy on streets lately uh, this past couple fiscal years with the Bear Valley projects. Now we've just tackled uh, almost $10 million worth of that amethyst um, uh, rehab on that. So that's a good thing going forward. Um, everything else, you know, you get your drainage, of course, and the water at $14 million. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure upgrades that need to happen in there, too. So we're up, uh, as you can see, we're up $8.3 million on the capital. General fund revenue by source, again, you know, taxes are going to be the majority of that. Uh, you have your property tax, your sales tax, uh, sales tax in blue. So all that's going to encompass that. Uh, other revenues and finance sources, um, that's going to pick up 11.8 million. Of course, your fines and uh, forfeitures, your licenses, your permits. Things through the court systems, through the parking tickets, through your uh, code enforcement is going to pick up for those things. Total general fund revenues, um, as you can see, sales tax, of course, being the majority. Uh, then it goes into the property tax. And these numbers um, are based off of we have a consultant, HDL, um, that works with us with our sales tax. and. Um, I think they work with a lot of cities, and they said sales tax is rel relatively going to be flat. So we pretty much did a little 1% uh, increase on that. Not very much, but we think it's very achievable. Um, there might even be a little more room to grow because I know Cracker Barrel is coming in um, and a few other uh, retailers are coming in. When you look at the TOTs, the transit occupancy tax, um, a little more aggressive, but you know, 4% as a another $47,000. But we do have two major uh, hotels coming in, uh, the Homes of Suites and the other one off of our post. Um, so that's going to help out a lot there too. Um, and property tax is picking up a little bit. Uh, we see that. We've heard that uh, from our building official um, that you have some developers coming in and wanting to build more um, residential, which is a good sign for us going forward. General fund by expenditures by department. Again, you know, public safety being the bulk of it. Um, if you look at it based on what last year, uh, last year when we showed this same slide, public safety was about 68% of the general fund. This year, because uh, the budget is a little bit bigger um, overall, that they are only 64% of the general fund today. But it's three and a half million dollars higher. Correct. Yeah. The higher we get the revenues, the better. Right. And looking at the general fund balance, um, we started off the year at 3.6 and um, 3.9, and we'll end at 3.6. <coughs> and then going forward, based on all the expenditures and just our first run, um, without any major cuts and without major reviews with the departments, and, and going down and getting a little leaner. Uh, we're projected, and again, it's just an estimate at 3.4 at the end of uh, 2018. What is that? We're not done yet. We're not done. Yet. I think that's it. Yes. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and get into your worksheet, your workbooks. Uh, the first uh, section is the budget summary. It kind of gives you an overview of where the money comes from, where it's going to go uh, currently. Again, your, uh, your charges for services are, are a huge chunk of where the money is coming from, along with the other revenues and your taxes. And then where the money is going, basically operations and maintenance is the bulk of that. You go to, if you flip the page, you'll look at it's broken down by category. Your taxes, your license, your fines and forfeitures. Um, what, what page are you on? Uh, just the second page. Fund balance summary. 
Well, your 2018 operating budget overview, all funds continue. Okay. Yeah. Please. Right there. Okay. You're right on the Go ahead. Okay. So, again, just looking at the total revenues um, for all funds citywide, a little over 202 million. And again, that 235 in expenditures. And again, that's that capital, that 41.6 is in there. And a lot of that is carried over to so. One of the things I'm going to ask you about, about four, five, six different places, okay. is this item called other revenues and other charges. It's, it's by far the biggest number on the actuals for 2016, and it changes so dramatically in 2017 and 18 when you start looking at individual departments. Those numbers are huge, and the changes are huge in some cases. And other is just not a very useful term. Yeah. Part of that on the expenditures category for other charges, a lot of that is your debt service um, that is in there, and I believe each department has some of that that they'll answer to when they get down to uh, their department of revenue for you. I don't think it will, but we'll keep okay. going. <laughs> All right. Um, again, you know, your other revenues out of that 46.2 million, that big chunk out of the, the revenues is consisting of your cost allocation plans, your pass-throughs from the county. Uh, there's a $24 million VETA pass-through on there too. So that kind of explains that. And Jim, as you adeptly mentioned, this is probably the only time that we look at the entire, the entire city as a whole. <coughs> Every agency, every subsidiary district, every subsidiary agency uh, that you sit on as a board, um, typically throughout the year, other than for, I guess, we feel like we should look at it as a total number. At some point, somebody will want to know what's the total number, but uh, looking at it and trying to get to some level of detail or find some meaning or purpose in combining all these funds, it, there really isn't. This is for newspapers, but it's not very useful. Right, right. It's better to look at each individual uh, department budget, at the general fund budget, and each of the enterprises of, that uh, represent the city separately. Because as we all know, those these funds can't be combined, uh, except on you know, for something like this, that's just a summary. So for today's overview purpose, why isn't the term viable uh, when you say other? What? Why is the term other not viable? Because it doesn't mean anything. We don't know what it is. There's other a lot of 198,000 other revenue in actual 16, and now it drops to 51 before, and now it's 43. <laughs> but, but other, other doesn't tell me anything. So okay. that's all. That's all. And one of the things that we're also uh, doing for the first time this year, and I don't think you'll really notice it because it's so far it's going pretty well. And that is that um, rather than having sort of a dual system, uh, where last year and years prior we had Excel spreadsheets that we all did budgets on, and then finance staff would take the time to input them into our accounting Enos software system. Um, this time, for the first year, we're having staff input them directly into the units. Um, and so we have already found a few typos here and there, a few errors here and there. Those will get cleaned up at, as we move along. Um, but uh, I, I just wanted to mention that uh, we could, in this draft budget document that you're looking at, end up finding some anomalies that, that don't quite make sense. And if you see anything like that, please ask. We'd be happy to either explain it or explain it as that's an area we need to get cleaned up for the final budget document. Right. Again, if you go to the next page, it's the fund balance summary. Again, we're going to we start it off. Um, we end up last year at 3.9, and we're, we'll be starting off at the fiscal at 3.6, and then we'll end up the new fiscal year on June 30th, 2018, at 3.4. And each of uh, the special revenues are all, it's all by category. So when you look at those pie charts and you see the special revenues, this is what encompasses all the special revenues as you go down that list. From the technology reserve fund all the way down to the uh, ads and defects in the districts. 
get a big reduction in those fund balances, and it looks like that's mostly because of capital expenditures. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So when I look at the public buildings, and again, we got that negative. That's from the old, from this building plus the golf course building. Correct. That's going to take years to get down that to positive. Many, 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 many years. So. Yeah, 150,000. Yeah. You turn to the next page, and again, the other categories, um, the enterprise funds, you know, from the golf course all the way down to the SLA debt service is listed there for you, um, and what those fund balances are, and then the agency funds with your CFDs and some of the assessment districts are there. And then I think what's interesting, when you go to the next page, you have your expenditures by department, and again, each department head will be coming up um, and giving you a quick overview, uh, a rundown of their departments and, and one of the, some of the major points that they're going to want to present. Um, but as you can see, you know, the administration, administrative services, pretty much even community services have a little increase their um, development, which took over animal control, uh, moved it over there, so that was a big increase for them. Public works. Here are the ones that jumped out at me. Engineering goes from a pattern of 14 all of a sudden to 28 million in the 2017 budget. Um, economic development goes from 20 million to 4 million. And water goes from 92 to 44. Well, I know on the engineering, and I think Brian would be able to. Once we get into the department, you see that you can bring that up. And I know there's a lot of capital, a lot of street improvements in the last couple of years that we've done. It's under engineering. Yes. Yeah, major street improvements is under engineering. Yeah. Because public works does maintenance, maintenance work, work, project management, site yeah. function. Yeah. As we turn the page, again, it goes to expenditures by type. So you have your general fund. Special enterprise funds, your fiduciary funds, and then your capital from all funds for a total of 235 million. So that'll take us um, into our general fund and quick little overview. And I'll come up and give you a quick overview of the general fund. Um, for the general fund, um, the revenues, um, the main revenues come from taxes at 73%. Um, property tax is about 29% of the revenue for general fund. Sales tax is about 37%. Franchise fees are about five percent of the general fund revenue, and activity is about two percent. For the expenditures, um, the expenditures for a general fund, uh, as we were saying earlier, is about sixty-four percent to public safety for police and fire, and then charges for services. <laughs> Christine, that other revenue is going up about almost $3 million. Is that is cost allocation yeah, the cost increase that we're doing? It's about $2.4 million. What's, what's in other revenue? Um, is it in there somewhere? No, we don't have the detail for the but it's cost allocation and then pass throughs from the county for general fund. Oh, okay. So that's pulling that's pulling revenue from other departments and putting moving it into the general fund based on the cost allocation study. Yes. Yes. We have a consultant. How did that change so dramatically? Um, the last time it was completed was. Um, fiscal year 11 12, we did those numbers. Um, just everything's changed so much since then, and we have a lot more expenditures. Um, it's 
general department. It includes um, the general expenditures, including administrative services, um, city manager, city council, risk management, um, legal costs, general legal costs are included. So a lot, um, just increased a lot since 2012. Yeah, 2012 was the, really the last year of major cuts. We've been through cuts in 2000. Uh, 9,000, about 910, uh, 10, 11, 11, 12. Uh, so that year would have been kind of a low point for activity through the finance department, through the HR department, uh, that sort of thing. So as we ramped up with uh, revenues, both in the general fund and in other funds, um, there's been a greater impact as a result. It seems to me back in 2010, General fund revenues were under fifty million dollars, but probably twenty or forty million out of close to sixty. Yeah. Did the cost allocation change because of total revenues or because of actual changes in who provided what services? It, it's a combination. Um, it has to do with um, each service that's provided by those uh, divisions, departments. So human resources, it wouldn't be based on revenue. Uh, it would be based on actual personnel work. Um, for finance, uh, typically we base it um, on AP, uh, you know, what departments, what divisions, what funds are impacting AP and what rate. So the cost allocation plan studies each of the costs that are going to be allocated and comes up with a different methodology for each one uh, if that's appropriate. It is based, based on the actual cost. Uh, NDS is doing the study, has been the study for us. NDS has been used for other study work. For the water. A consultant? Yes. Yes. If we uh, just wing it, which probably was done, I'll say, 10 or 15 years ago, um, you run the risk of uh, not having it uh, succeed a challenge and be a lawsuit. The town of Alpha Valley recently had one on their super something or other charge, ultimately lost a lawsuit. The, the paper is newspapers correctly after we paid eight hundred thousand uh, dollars from because they didn't have an approved cost allocation plan. Is my read of what I read in the newspaper at least as to why. So, um, there's also federal grant awards uh, that require uh, cost allocation plans. Um, you know for Fully be circular, whatever the number is. I don't remember the number anymore, but uh, it's so gone. It's now uh, uniform guidance. Oh, okay. Used That's a be. short name for that long name. Yeah. It used to be far too hard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it used to be OMB circular 59 or 87 or something. Like that. That's for governmental entities. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, the problem is all cost allocation systems are imperfect. All they're all based on estimates. Uh -huh. And they are subject to all kinds of, I don't want to use the term manipulation, but all kinds of estimating. Yeah. And, and it's not uncommon to get a cost allocation plan that gets us the answer. Uh, I'd just like to know that it's a, and, and there's a list of consultants who will get you the answer you want. It's a long, 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 oh, long sure. list. So sure. I'd just like to know that this is more than this sweetening or general. Yeah, it's, we are still in that process, I'll say. Um, I don't think that the cost allocation plan is absolutely final at this point. It's, it's still under review. Um, you know, it might be a good idea, I don't know if it has to be in a budget session, but at some point to come back to the council with some kind of report on okay. how we do it, what we've done. Yep. How, how well the foundation should lay out the methodology to see that. Not that it would interest a lot of people, but <laughs> it, would interest, it would interest a few of us. Yeah. yeah. Right now we are working off of sort of the final draft of that study. Um, we are still getting input from departments on any impacts to their funds. Um, and I am still uh, in the middle of reviewing it myself personally. So. And because without that cost allocation plan, we're in trouble in general. Should that be a first thing? Uh, absolutely. That uh, would have been every year for the last 10 or more, I'm sure. Uh, it's and it's entirely appropriate. 
to charge those departments, those funds, for the services that they need. Let's just make sure it's all signed. My goal is well. Okay. Um, as we go forward, if, if you turn a couple pages down, you'll see the general fund revenues by line item. I can give you an overview of what each component and what they consist of. Um, you know, all the way from the administration charges, all the way for working on the department agencies. Um, so it's all there listed in, in detail. If you, if you keep going right after that um, quick summary. I was just going to mention apologies for not numbering the pages. They were, they were concerned about the numbers in the charts more so and then numbering the pages. So you're on general fund revenue by line item? Correct. All right. Okay. And you'll see three pages with a graph at the end on that and then it'll go right into general fund expenditures by line item. So that'll give you some detail on what encompasses the revenues for general fund and what is the difference between sales tax in lieu and sales tax? Um, sales tax in lieu is from the triple flip. Uh, so um, 2007, the state decided to borrow money and swap for revenue so that they could avoid the Prop 49, that future now? Prop 49 implications of increasing the revenues and 50% of that having to go to education. So they traded us on an annual basis one quarter of our property tax uh, for sales tax or vice versa. I don't know. The whole thing was overly complicated and it, it finally went away. The bonds were repaid using our money but not showing it on the state's books. Um, they were repaid last year um, and so that's why it's finally tailed off. But for you know, several years, five or six years, we had to in order to be able to compare our sales tax number, we had to add in the sales tax in blue that came to us as property tax. Otherwise, it looked like our sales tax tanked even more than it otherwise did. Well, sales tax has increased. It has. It has. And it's going to even more. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's been very successful attracting a lot of business to the city. So, in fact, if you go down to the end of Restaurant Row and hang out in that area for a little while, you might get run over by a tractor. They got a lot of things going on there, and there's even more coming. Uh, in fact, between the Walmart and the Coles, uh, there's new development going in there. Uh, we have one new hotel coming in that'll add to our transient occupancy tax. And the second new hotel is on the agenda tonight for uh, council. And it's the best revenue we can, best tax revenue we can generate because it requires almost no service. And it's not just our population. Our, our business centers do attract criminals. So we do need to hire additional deputies. That's why, uh, even though our population base may not be all that much larger than our surrounding cities, our, our public safety contracts are. Can you say that our business centers can attract criminals, depending upon cost okay. of construction and how secure they provide it? It can because certainly be mitigated. So well, that's the whole point, I guess. It can yeah. be mitigated fairly easily, and we, there's no reason we don't hold the builders to that standard. Mm -hmm. well, I'll tell some of my questions back, hoping that you know, I can hear what you were saying, that it's not going to be the case, and that they're accumulating. I don't want to seem like I'm overburdening you later on. Also, uh, some of my questions now. Um, these two are probably more common. So next time, if you could please allow um, council to have a copy of this, I'm going to take a lot of notes. It's good to have something like this in front of me. And then also, that's it. Also, um, if you're able to close up, you're going line by line. It's really hard for me to follow what you're thinking. So if you have a pointer and you're pointing at something like that, it just assists me to know what it is that you're talking about. So that's a comment that are less comments for later. Thank you.
Excuse me, where are you so I'll know where I am? <laughs> um, after the revenues, we're going to head over to the expenditures by line item for general fund. So you'll see that a couple pages um, where you are now. Just a question, John. When I'm looking at the general fund revenues by line item on that same page, and I just happened to notice in 2015, we had 68, right in the middle of the page, as in material handling, 68,000, as is waste, 62,000. In 2016 actuals, there was almost nothing in, in the budget. There is nothing. And there's nothing there on uh, what happened? 17. The uh, the building permits 2015. It's way up. 2016. It's up, but not so much. 2017. It's dropping. On the other hand, with the building permits, you have electrical permits, plumbing permits, and all the <laughs> mechanical permits. Those are all up, but the building permits are down. How, how does that possibly happen? One of the things that we've done in this budget so far is we've estimated conservatively. Um, in years past, um, I would say that we were more aggressive with projections. Um, with uh, a new administration with our sales tax. I don't want to say it's going down because it's not going down, but it's certainly not growing as quickly from a percentage basis. Um, so it is flattening a little bit. Uh, I would say that the economy this year is we're less sure about it, and especially at this point in the budget process, um, we're trying to be as conservative as possible um, because we don't want to err and come in and miss the budget mark uh, for next but, year. But for business license, for example, 424000 in 2016, and we're estimating 190. Why would we Go down cut down that? The yeah. biggest reason for that is the um, rental housing, new rental houses, housing ordinance uh, that caused uh, landlords to get a business license at a, sort of a one-time or a one-and-a-half-time impact. It's not an annual license? It's an annual license, um, but the amount goes down because of self-certification. So, Chris, do you want to get more detail? Yes. Uh, the new license is $174, and then a, a renewal is only 84 Yeah. And as Doug was mentioning, we're hitting the whole city um, right now. So the first couple of years we had this in the budget, yes, we expected okay. high revenues. And then it'll taper off. What we're finding is that not as many people are responding. Um, so we're not getting the revenues as high as we thought, but yet it means that our budget might be a little bit higher uh, for, a, for a couple more years. Okay. But not that. Thank you. Now, is it possible that we have landlords that uh, do not have a license? Uh, it's very possible. Well, it's uh, not just possible, it's true. Uh, it, uh, I mean, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's part of what Chris was saying is that we haven't seen as many come in and as we expected as we have. Uh, so that's part of our code enforcement efforts. Is the way I see it is because I prepare income tax and I see that they do rent. Right. You know, they're landlords. But my question always is I don't see whether you can for our license. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can be difficult for us to identify them. We know they're out there, but it can be difficult just driving by a house. It doesn't say that it's a rental house. So um, we have to research, we have to educate uh, and inform them. Uh, a lot of times that comes through code enforcement activities. If they have a code enforcement case uh, and we find out they're a landlord, then of course that's the next question is, you know, where's your business license? And we have an opportunity to educate them at that point. And it's not my place to report them. Though. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the place of any <laughs> private business owner to report. I, I drove by a house near where I live where I saw three commercial trucks parked out the front. It just looked completely inappropriate. They're still parked there. And I contacted Keith and Doug. I said, do you think this is righteous? And, and, and it turns out they did not have a home occupancy license. Yeah. But apparently there's nothing wrong with parking three commercial vehicles on the street in front of their house. As long as they have a license, a home right. occupancy license. But they didn't have one. I see nothing at all wrong with us anytime we observe something that I doesn't agree. look right. Just to contact them. 
Oh, I, I agree. Okay. We would love for you to do that. I think uh, Mayor Garcia is asking about her clients. That's called bookkeeping <laughs> office. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't, we're not asking her to make a list of clients who didn't have to claim their slices business. on their taxes this year. <laughs> so this uh, you know, <laughs> could have a negative impact on her clients. Yeah. 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 Y
correct. Yes. 1718. So the next section uh, you'll see if you flip over the, the pie graph, you'll get into the general fund expenditures by line item. And that is by category, so there's total personnel versus maintenance and operations. So now, one, one more question, I'm sorry. I'm back on the, the uh, last page of revenues by line item, just above the pie chart. You've got a line item called pastor. It's always been there. What is pastor? It's a revenue. I see the cost allocation increase. Pastor. Yeah. It's the money we get from the county through the property tax distribution. Um, they separated out. I'm not too sure about the details of, the, of why it's separated out. Um, so it's property tax, but it's not all property tax. Yeah, I would imagine it's something other than the the ad valorem property tax. Other property taxes. Just mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing that this may very well be the um, the redevelopment agency, former redevelopment agency pastors, they typically call those pastors. Um, and just for information's sake, this is Christina's first time presenting this. Well, no excuse. She's got to take a look at all this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'm just letting you know. So uh, we did uh, lose Pat Rosenberg, who typically handled a lot of the, the heavy lifting with regard to especially the revenues. We lost her. She's now the director of finance in Barstow. And uh, Bill Webb retired earlier this year, so John has taken even more of a lead role on this. But well, and it's okay, since this is his first pass, it's okay to not have an answer. It'd be nice next time around to have the answer, so that's okay. easy to do. Yeah, make sure that you know answer. where our questions are. Okay. Yeah. That's all the purpose of this. I'll bet we'll find out next I'll bet you'll find out probably by the end of the week. <laughs> So then as you turn that page, you'll go into the general fund expenditures, again, by category for the next couple pages. And this is another item that, or list that is interesting to look at, but considering you look at the personnel numbers, you're talking about personnel from almost every department that would be rolled up into this number. So um, it's good to see it as a total but there's not the, the there's not a whole lot of there's a lot of detail behind it. Are you talking about the general fund? Yeah. yeah. How's that relate to the funds? Um, well, the overall general fund full-time wages is seven point eight million dollars, and a portion of that will be city manager, a portion of that will be finance, IT, um, some public <coughs> work, some engineering, some a little bit of everything. So, um, other than you know around budget time, when we look at totals and summaries. Um, there's not a tremendous level of detail uh, to be discussed about some of these numbers just because they're they're summarizing all the dark departments that are about to get up and present. Here's my question. Full-time wages are up a half a million. Part-time wages are up 450000 so that's almost a million in increased wages. Benefits are up 400,000, and retiree expenses up 250. 400,000 as what's that? 40 percent of about a million. Is that about the rate for our benefits? Because it doesn't include payroll taxes. It's just benefits. 40 percent of the dollar, wage dollar. Do you know that that figure, Josie, as far as just a rough the benefit compared to, <coughs> to salaries, it's between 30 and 35 yeah. percent. The, the biggest reason for that increase this year is the PERS decision to um, estimate the rate of return from 7.5 percent down to 7 percent on a go-forward basis. Uh, a couple of years ago, they, they uh, change the way that they would do the smoothing of their rates over a 15-year period and shortened it to five, which created more volatility. Um, and then this year is the first year that they've adjusted their projections down from seven and a half down to seven. And that half a percent increase is the biggest reason yeah. for that cost. Yeah. It flows out to an enormous number. Yes, it does. And it's still unrealistic. Grossly unrealistic. 
45% then of payroll taxes on top of that. I mean, we're talking about fringe costs that are more than half the cost of the labor dollar. Yeah, that's evident in our public safety contracts as well. Although the contracts themselves are not included in the detail of the budget. I know that the overtime costs, a couple of years ago, overtime costs um, fell below the cost of an employee for the first time. It used to be uh, hiring additional employees was a little bit cheaper because overtime was time and a half. And actually, the benefit calculations are now, as are ours, greater than 50% um, when you include everything. And therefore, overtime has become cheaper uh, to a certain degree on an hourly basis. Uh, Part-time employees, when they hit a certain point in time, time work um, per week, um, they qualify for um, some very fairly basic retirement benefits, uh, but they don't they don't earn the same level of benefits as uh, full-time employees. Uh, they do, I believe, uh, earn uh, new vacation and sick time based on you know, state law. Oh, they do sick time. Sick time. Oh, they do receive that. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I think it was three days per year if they're above a certain uh, time. Basis. But it's based on the hours they work. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. okay. So as we've moved along, um, we can go into all the departments. Um, and have the department heads come up and give a quick little overview. And again, we're going to try and get through every department today um, in just a little over an hour. And now, get through every department, and at the end, you can um, start asking the questions that the department heads that pertains to. We'll come back up and, and answer those for you. Now, I know we've taken a lot of questions so far. Are, are there any additional on the preceding pages that we've just been through? The administration piece is fairly small. Would it be all right if we kind of focus on the big ones? fine with me. I was going to mention that administration, you well, pretty much know what that is. That's, that's you, that's Andre, that's me, and that's Carol Lee. You know what we do. There's really no change. Um, there is some, you know, if you want to get into the weeds, there's some minor changes in the way personnel are being allocated. The community um, service is almost level to little bit of I'd be more interested personally in public safety and water and public works. Mind. Well, what uh, the other thing that stands out when I look at the right hand, the last line, like expenditures, what page what, uh, they're not numbered. General fund expenditure by line item. The last, next to the last page. Yeah. When it's a, uh, when that percentage change is huge, I have a question. When I ask it, if it's huge, what? I get why, 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 why? You know, I don't have to ask you a question. You can see what they are. 100% change, 41% change, 148% change. Why? Okay. I don't want to take up the time now, but you know, building maintenance up 600,000. Why? Now come on. You don't have to give me an answer now, but I do want an answer. And honestly, Jim, that would be better done on a department by department basis because even some of these changes that might be zero or close to zero, maybe a 75% change in one department and a 75% change the other way in a different department. And so when you roll it up into the total general fund, it would equal each other out. Um, so it's better to look on a department by department basis if you want that level of detail. Uh, I just want to know.
contingent on our revenue. Like, more. <laughs> and then lastly, um, looks like we have a discussion like 2011, 2012, and so we may have been useful to have incorporated those figures in this overview for comparison. The length of conversation taken for this year would have been essential, but I don't know if this was 2017, 2018, and bringing up what happened in the past kind of did help. I mean, it would have helped me at least understand the big jump. We've got two years of actuals. It's typically what we have. I don't know. The problem with trying to include multiple years of, of uh, budgets is you start to have a space. Right. So I just want to be included in the conversation. That's all I'm trying to say. So for here, I kind of want to try to understand it. If, not, it would, if it's contextualized and say, you know, this, this information is going to help me, then I'm like, oh, okay, I, I get it. But at the time, I felt excluded and I thought, oh, do we have 2012 somewhere? I think that's something essential and important. Just maybe contextualizing it so that I You're going to have to guess at what years are going to come up in the conversation. Well, we'll go back to the audio. Yeah. Um, one thing, uh, keeping that in mind, um, I think your point is absolutely correct. We need to focus on, on the big impacts, the, the city council's priorities. Um, but since we have a new council member, I don't want to kind of gloss through some of the other departments. I know it's one of the issues that comes up when I meet with council member Gomez is um, that a lot of her questions are because she wasn't involved in the budget process last year because she wasn't on the council. So um, if you can indulge us for a little bit of education as we walk through each of the departments, I think it would be helpful for, for our future discussions. Mm -hmm. but, but department heads have, have heard and understand the council's priorities. So we want to get past these other departments uh, who are a lesser impact on. But well, we can go by administration. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think we all know. You can walk in with what the city manager's office does, the city clerk's office, city attorney, and city council does. So I wasn't going to have much of a presentation anyway. So, John, uh, just keep standing there. Are you going to lead off administrative services and then pass it to your right, or how are you doing this? We can do however we want to do it. Um, when you go into administrative services, of course, it encompasses finance staff, human resources division, and also the technology division. We're kind of like the uh, hub of the bicycle. Every transaction comes through us. So we're uh, an integral support uh, service for all the departments, especially all the service departments with field crews and everything. Uh, we try to make their life easier so they can get out there and do their job and, and not have any hesitation as they, they go forward to uh, make things happen. Um, as you can see, um, pretty much finance has a 7% increase. Uh, human resources at five percent, and technology came down, dropped thirteen percent um, overall. So the overall administrative service is pretty much even from what we were last year. Um, when you take a look at what personnel and OEM um, looks like, eight percent, eleven percent respectively on those increases. Um, capital dropped down a tremendous amount. Uh, we're still because we are a general fund department. Um, a lot of the capital that happens within administrative services is all mostly capital purchases with technology and trying to keep your technology infrastructure um, up to date as much as possible, which includes the hardware and the software that goes along with that. Did I understand you, you said it's even? It's up to million dollars. The budget's a million dollars. I'm just looking at percentages. So when you, if you're looking at total operating budget for admin services going from 8.5 to 8.5 basically, that's comparing budget to budget. Right. I don't care about that. I don't care about actual to the current year. So the 7.3 actuals, correct. You're going up about a million dollars. Personnel is up $800,000. Have we increased staff or is that just all raises? Well, we have, um, we do have, we're, we went out for a chief financial officer this year. Um, and there is also merit increases in there along with the COLA uh, from the March to March that came up that was in there. But on the whole, no increase in staff. Not in admin services, no. just for, except for the CFO. Uh, one position. Except for what? The chief financial, financial officer that officer. was out for recruitment. Right. And that's budgeted. And that's budgeted, correct. And uh, one thing you'll see, I think, across the board is increases in personnel. Yep. The uh, policy that was adopted by the council either last year or before 
sort of formally adopting the March to March colon that we've used for I don't know how long. Carol Lee, how long have you been here? As long as I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cox, can you <laughs> remember a time we didn't use the March to March uh, for coal? Yes, 2009, 10, 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but when it got brought back, it got brought back at the, at the place. But, uh, uh, anyway, so that is in there. It was a 2.7% this year. I think it was a little bit lower than anticipated last year. Now it's playing catch up as happens on an annual basis. Um, and then also that the PERS cost uh, impacts every single department budget uh, right at that personnel line. Yeah, it's in personnel. So we probably CFO or not yet? Not yet. We are uh, in the middle of a recruitment process. It's closed. I think the deputy city manager position closed yesterday and the CFO closed a week ago. I'll turn to my colleagues to see if there's anything else they would like to add for admin services. Okay. Okay. okay, so we'll go ahead and I'll turn it over to uh, Christian Gunter, who's your director for community services. Good afternoon. Broad overview on the community services budget. Um, we have some things that jump out related to operations and maintenance, um, which are generally non capital improvement projects. They are repair projects, things that have, we've been wanting to fix for quite a while, and we put them in this year. Uh, things such as uh, a roof repair out at Westland Sports Center. Uh, Redoing the and putting in an ADA compliant cashier's area in Spoke Community Center. Those are the kinds of things. Um, personnel wise, um, we have a little bit of increase. We have four positions that we'd like to fill. Um, what adding one part time maintenance aid. Um, we have a um, change uh, for a full time customer service rep in the community center as opposed to uh, three part-timers and one, one full-timer and one part-timer. Um, we're also looking at uh, adding a park docent or ranger position which is shared between parks, recreation, and solid waste. That person would basically be out on weekends checking on the parks, uh, making sure things are picked up, cleaned up. Uh, this is also part of our overall plan to do a reservation system in the parks for the picnic shelters. It's one of the things we want to try and implement as well. Um, uh, in addition, um, uh, we have a rec specialist position that we want to upgrade to a rec supervisor position. Then we also have a couple of open positions as well. So, yeah, a large, large part of the increase in community services is some of those. Uh, deferred maintenance items that we're trying to catch up on. Um, those have not happened. A real strict level of review yet, Kristen. So we, we may end up uh, trimming those down a little bit, maybe spread them out in time a little bit. That's part of the draft budget that we're looking at. And we have no problem with that, yet, of course. Why is solid waste going up two and a half million dollars? Part of that is how we've accounted for the birth charges. Uh, the birth charges for what you uh, the material recovery, recovery facility. Uh, the materials recovery facility was being accounted for as a single line item, as a net charge, how much additional or how much extra expense we would have. Um, we were asked to separate that out now so that the revenue side stays in our revenues portion and the expense uh, stays in our expenses. Uh, that added approximately 980000 I believe it was, to the bottom line there. In addition, we've had some COLA increases for our service provider. Um, and specifically, uh, we also have some um, uh, additional equipment that we're going to be adding. I believe a new trash truck and also a uh, gravel truck. Right. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that the council has made a priority is the cleanup of our desert areas. 
Um, so we are going to be adding a crew that will have a second trash truck out there picking up, essentially picking up waste from abandoned uh, areas. Um, illegal dumps. A piece, yeah, illegal dumps. And in researching it, one of the, I guess, more innovative pieces of equipment that has been discovered by staff is actually a, a essentially a grappling device, um, kind of like you see in an old, old time junkyard, a big claw goes down and picks things up. Um, it'll make our crews more efficient um, and also uh, it'll be safer for you. Fewer injuries. Fewer injuries yeah. uh, you know, when you're out there picking up couches or, or whatever. Um, and so we're looking at adding the, those pieces of equipment. Um, what do we do with that junk on this one? It's going to go into a landfill, doesn't it? Sofas, or mattresses. A lot of it can be recycled, and we do. We actually have a very active recycling uh, capacity. Um, Jano Armstrong, who is our uh, environmental services manager, we call her the Recycling Queen. Uh, she actually is finding uh, new avenues for waste streams all the time. Whenever we have a specialized thing, in fact, mattresses happen to be one of the things that uh, we had a huge problem with. There were very few places to properly dispose of them because of their nature in being layered and difficult to handle. And um, she was able to find a new disposal path for it. So, Mr. Cox, All of this is funded through the same fund for household waste? Garbage collector? Uh, it, it's billed at the same, on the same bill, but the household hazardous waste is a separate... Not hazardous, it's just household waste. Household waste. You come once a week, they pick up the yeah. trash, we pay, the money goes into fund all of this. There are... Three different funds, if I'm not mistaken. Three yeah, or four. I did. You have I read. a landfill mitigation fund, you have a uh, right. resource for recycling fund, and this all the waste fund. Right. So those are all paid on your trash bill. Yes. Yeah. I just noticed that I was trying to figure out. Never mind. I'll go to the other one. I have an idea. We're trying to clean up the city, and it's not working. Um, I don't think a, a, a day goes by that I'm not driving and I see a new dump. That somebody is creating. The tires I can have, I pick those up, I take them to our recycling center. Some of the other things I can't, and I certainly don't expect individuals to do this, but I do. But it seemed to me that it would be a wonderful project to have nice new signs. Illegal dumping fine is $500. And to go after those individuals and have a new program that says if you turn those individuals in, you get a reward. You get half the fine money. A bounty. A bounty. You see the neighbor dumping call. It'll be confidential. We find them. You get money. I bet you will start cleaning up the city. Uh, through the MRF, there is such a program where you know you can actually take a video, send it in. Uh, I don't have the number and all that information, but uh, Dana has all that. That's through the MRF. They have that program, and uh, it's uh, I believe it's either state or county funded, and uh, they give rewards. I, I think we ought to reward people. For I think it ought to be a thousand. Somebody sees this. I think it's a thousand. And if nobody sees it, it's only a matter of time till the family members squabble and one of them will pick up the phone and tell us. There's actually a viral video out right now, uh, just this past weekend, of somebody with a drone who happened to see a truck that was going off into wherever, I don't even know what state it was in, Perfect. to do some illegal dumping and they, he and another drone pilot actually followed this truck with their drones and took video and it was on the news and everything and they've now been arrested. So uh, I think there's a merit to that and we'll certainly look into, uh, you know, some kind of a bounty type of system. You know, little Johnny gets mad at dad, picks up the phone, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it'll work if we reward those people who turn in the bad people. It'll work. This could be a source of revenue for the homeless people who are pretty much wanting and they're more likely to see. Yeah, they can run on each other. I think it's worth pursuing because somebody saw something. Well, maybe Dana can give us uh, a presentation, a presentation on it because memo, I know there is a program. We can do a memo really easily and then you don't have it. Yeah. We do have like something that yeah. No problem. Anything else, Christian? Or any more questions for Christian? I want to be sure we get to everything. Nothing else from me? Um, do we anticipate the landfill costs going up from the county? 
Um, we negotiated um, them to go down, I want to say two years ago. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Um, but along with that is an annual cost of living increase um, that's built into that rate. But it actually went down a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I sat on the city manager's technical advisory committee for that and helped negotiate that for us. Um, it's in the budget. Uh, we are assuming that level of increase. And it's you know, worked into the rate as well. And actually, you mentioned the rate. We are going to be doing a Prop 218 study in the coming year. Uh, we have consultants who say when we did the, uh, the water rate study uh, that we just signed contracts with. Right. So we'll be doing that this year as well. 218 study on uh, solid, solid waste. Solid waste. Solid, solid waste. Right. Yeah, on all fees, you have to have a 218, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a number of years since we did it the call in the last one. It's been a very long time. All fees. Sure. All fees that are to members of the public. Yes. You know, building uh, fees, we do a study, but it's not a 218 study. It's more of a time and motion type of study. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chris Porcher, Director of Development. The Development Department consists of five divisions, building, planning, code enforcement, business license, and now animal control. As John Mediola mentioned, the animal control division was moved in shortly after the budget process last year, uh, the round of fiscal year, the animal control division was moved under development, and it's being supervised by the code enforcement department were able to um, combine their code enforcement efforts so that they're on the same page, they're doing the same thing, uh, they're following the same laws. Uh, it's going really well. We have asked for a little bit of an increase for training for the animal control division. I think it's only $12,000. Um, overall, our, uh, Doug gave us the direction not to increase our budget and uh, <laughs> we, we tried to hold to it as well as, well as we possibly could. Uh, for Mr. Cox, there is a 48% increase um, in animal control. That's an increase from uh, the revised budget from last year. The, if you go back to the 2016 actuals, it's 460 to versus 457. So it's actually a decline. We did promote a dispatcher to an animal control officer, but we also, when that, when animal control moved over from community services, one of the employees stayed there. So uh, we I lost an employee, so the, that's how the salary rates say. I'd like to make a suggestion when we finalize this budget. I have absolutely no interest in the difference between last year's revised budget and this year's budget and the percentage difference. The only difference that matters is the actual, actual against the current budget. budget. Please don't waste our time. <laughs> the problem with that, Jim, is that the actual is from two years ago now. No, this is one item. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. All right. Um, in the, uh, if you look down in the development summary on page two of our of our sheet, uh, you do see a 105 percent increase. I talked with the uh, information technology staff, and what that is, it's a the development when we adopted the technology fee. If you remember that to help pay for our computer program, that's coming. It's on its way. Uh, when we did that technology fee. There was also the need for an expenditure to go with it, and that expenditure went into our budget. I imagine by, by the end of this process, we'll move that out, and you'll see no change in our budget from uh, no increase in our budget. It's, it's, Thank you, Joe. It's I'm not yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not our money to spend even, so it, it's uh, it's interesting that it's in there. But that's where that increase comes from. We did not uh, increase our operations and maintenance. We were able to actually trim it a little bit as much as we could. We have a staff of 38 employees yeah. in those five divisions. Do you have any questions? All right. No. Okay. Public oh, safety. John, you're up. Come on. I don't see Dan here. This is so. the one we're waiting for. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, well, I'm a new guy. Where do I start? I'd say start with traffic, but maybe go with the overall. Well, well let's, let's start with the Schedule A. For um, those of you who don't know what the Schedule A is, it, it is the county proposed uh, law enforcement service contract. Um, this year it came in at, uh, at 23 
Um, I, I could go down the level of service, which talks about um, how many personnel are, are in each category. Do you want to hear that? Uh, it yes. is. Okay, yes. that covers a captain, a lieutenant, 10 sergeants, 9 detectives. Um, it breaks it down 67 deputy sheriffs, 1 deputy sheriff, canine officer, 2 school resource officers, um, 11 SSSs, which are sh sheriff service specialists, 1 supervising office specialist, 1 secretary, 12 office specialists, 32 marked units. Four, marked, uh, four unmarked units, we call those slick tops, one 4x4, four four, one K9 unit, 18 unmarked units, one 4x4 four four Explorer, seven pickup trucks, those are normally what our S's drive when they're out there doing uh, traffic enforcement. And What's the total head count? <coughs> sworn, right? The well, sworn. there's 70, 70 deputies, 70 sworn deputies. That's not being increased this year. Has it been that number for a while? Is it lower? Is it um, we we added two. I want to say two years ago, uh, maybe three now. Um, the last deputy that we added was actually Higuera, who uh, is a deputy for Raiders. Uh, we have okay. yeah. um, We have not. Uh, there's there's not no additional deputies included in this year. Seventy. Yes. Well, at this point. So um, let's see here. Uh, the pickup trucks, two Ford Escapes, uh, uh, there's dispatch services in here. Uh, the HTs, the uh, maintenance with those uh, MPCs, mobile data computers, um, taser replacement, amortized over four years. And then below that, it talks about administrative support, office automation, services and supplies. Um, liability and bombing, workman's comp, and the county admin cost. And all of that comes up to your 23 to 183 that you want. Council will have a copy of it. This is something that comes to you for approval uh, as part of the budget. How does that 23 relate to I see 21 as an actual and 16, 24 as a budget for 18 or 17? Well, where's that? It's part of the 24 million. Uh, under operations and maintenance, but there's other line items uh, that are included in the Sheriff's Department budget and our police budget um, that are not part of the Schedule A that are extra. I can talk a little bit about those. Yeah, sure. So, so there, are, there are some other costs associated with that fuel, which is very, very high. Um, we have vehicle maintenance that comes out of an operational budget. There's overtime. Um, that's up to 500, uh, 500, 000, a little over $500,000 each week. We want to up that just a little bit. There was a 3% pay and increase. And, and um, to equate that into overtime, it has, we added, we want 3% added to it. Um, if we don't add it to the overtime cost, then that's fewer hours we have available for the deputies on, on overtime. There's also a recent court case in Santa Rosa, I recall exactly. Um, that uh, it wasn't the county sheriff, but another public safety organization, uh, their union sued, um, saying that the, I'm going to get this wrong, Josie will correct me, but essentially all of the extra money that uh, police officers and all, all of public employees get, whether that's you know, uniform allowance or whatever, should be included in an overtime calculation sort of a total compensation, not benefits, but total cash compensation should be included in the overtime calculation. I know it sounds fairly absurd because the hourly rate is the hourly rate, but the court decided in their favor. So ultimately all of the overtime rates, not just for public safety personnel, but for all city employees have had to have been adjusted slightly to comply with that court ruling. Was that close, Josie? Okay. Yes, for example, um, a lot of agencies have uh, the fringe where anything left over after you purchase your medical, dental, and, and vision insurance, you can take that as cash. So let's say, for example, an employee gets $100 in cash back after they purchase all their insurance. That $100 has to be um, calculated into a new hourly rate in order to calculate the overtime rate. 
So in actuality, they're getting more money, um, a higher compensation when they work overtime. And that affects benefits and retirement? No, it overtime does not affect retirement. But if it goes into the salary, if it goes into the salary, it has to affect something. Um, overtime is excluded from our CalPERS okay. calculation. Yeah. But, but it, they do get a higher compensation rate for overtime. Yeah, and actually, depending on how agencies decide to calculate it, every single employee could have a slightly different overtime rate because he or she takes a little bit less or a little bit more or maybe no cash, uh, you know, left over after benefits. So each one of those uh, may have to be calculated separately. Chief, who works most in the, the overtime? Are they um, patrol or detectives? Or we we um, we're, we're tracking our overtime. Um, I, I don't want to say a lot right now. Well, we are. We're looking at it. Um, we, we were we were over two months ago, and we, we had to go evaluate what we were doing, where we were spending overtime. We got down to, to zero, so we're doing good right now, uh, meeting our our, our end uh, year result. Um, when we have, I'll give you an example. When we had the early morning restaurant burglaries, we must have had 15, 20 in the high desert, and with Victorville having the majority of them. We had to put guys, um, in addition to what, are, what they're doing during the day, we had them coming in the morning. We had a crime analyst look at when these crimes were happening, and we, we put through, we built a team, three or four guys. We also pulled in some people from Hesperia and Apple Valley. We didn't have to pay them, of course, because that's the way we work. And those guys came in, and it was about their fourth day of overtime. They, they caught them in the act, uh, Roy, Roy Rogers, and uh, I don't remember what, uh, what restaurant it was, but anyway, they caught him in the app. Those are the certain things, those are the type of things that we do. Um, lately, and, and, and uh, you're going to see this real soon, we're, we're doing some traffic enforcement right now, extra traffic enforcement on air base route. So I, I hate to call it a knee jerk reaction, um, but when people ask us, what are you doing about this, you know, and, and me personally, I go and I look at I look at the, okay, is it a is it a street thing? Is it a sign thing? Is it is it is it an enforcement problem? What is it that we can do to to you know fix it? And um, you know when people choose to drive the way they do, it, it, it's hard to stop that. But we need to put some cars out there to slow people down. We put the speed trailer out there. So we use some grant money for these types of operations, and we use some of the overtime money. It just depends on on what we're doing. So it, it just, you know, when you ask where we're spending the money, it just depends what, what the flavor of the day is. Are they accidents? Is, is it a crime spree? Um, you know, is, are, are we going to go out and are we going to hit people living in the desert making, making camps, um, drug problem, whatever the case may be? I recently read that uh, some police departments are going to start using drones and they're going to have grants and they're going to have training because they think it'll actually cut down the cost and give an eye in the sky that they don't normally have. Where's uh, our sheriff's department on the use of drones? Uh, our sheriff has not um, considered the use of drones at this point. Um, uh, there has been no talk <coughs> any of our staff meetings. There's been no talk about about using drones. Um, um, I have heard of some departments using them. I, uh, you know, there's a lot of scrutiny when you use them. There's a lot of uh, uh, public concern over privacy. And I think when you look at the grief we had over red light cameras, you start talking about drones. Yeah, you know, we we our our um, arson bomb, our SED Special Enforcement Division, they they don't have drones, but they they have throwable um, objects they throw into houses, and they're remote controlled with cameras on them. And other than other than getting up in the sky. Um, Pretty much 40 King, our helicopter is available most of the time, and if not H-80, uh, Highway Patrol's helicopter is there to help us out, um, so we utilize them quite a bit. Chief, um, public safety is, is obviously a priority for all of us, I mean, we support you 100 percent, and uh, I, you know, you mentioned that uh, restaurant robbery, I actually happened to be on Restaurant Row for a meeting, and I was talking to the manager, and I just like to commend your folks on catching those folks, uh, those people. Uh, but it, it, you know, the, the good news stories don't get told very often. But uh, one of the things that was an added benefit, the restaurant I was in was not victimized. 
However, of course, I'm sure everyone was concerned. And one of the deputies did come and basically brief the restaurant manager or sort of what's been going on, what to, you know, uh, uh, and that communication to the restaurant manager just made them feel so much better about the whole thing. Uh, because you're talking about, you know, obviously money being exchanged, cash available, all, all kinds of issues. Uh, um, so anyway, like I said, it was a great job and uh, we support you 100%. Um, one of the things that's difficult uh, being here in this position is that our population keeps increasing um, and our revenues since I've been here have increased but so have our expenses. Um, so again, knowing public safety is a priority, how many deputies would you say you would need um, sort of just in the short term or the long term? I don't know if you talk about this, I don't know what right size looks like but do you have a recommendation other than as many as we can get you? Is that <laughs> fair to say? <laughs> you keep it uh, under I, two. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been here four months, mm -hmm. right? And, and I was here in two. I was here 2007 to 2009. And um, you know, when everybody's healthy, when I don't have anybody off on, on uh, that's sick or gets injured, and and you know, the city gets that they get their refund when somebody's off for so many days and whatnot. If, if I get everybody healthy, we, you know, we, we do okay. I don't want to sit here and say, you know, that we're good right now because I think we could do better. You're right. Um, for me to, to stand here and give you a, a figure, um, I, I don't want to do that. I, I mean, uh, I have a number in my head. I had it a long time ago. On how, much, on how many I wanted, and then I even lowered it a little bit recently um, when I started getting some of my deputies back that were injured. Um, you know, we have we have 49 that are on on patrol, and then the rest you, you know you give you out mm -hmm. into the met to the major enforcement team, the game team. Um, you put one in the detective bureau. You put uh, seven in traffic, um, and then and and you know you give them out into your day shift or night shift, and then you got your vacations that you got to worry about. So we try to keep a certain amount out there, and I try not to tell people how many are out on the streets for obvious reasons. Um, but yes, it would be nice to have more people out there. And you know, I know, I know when you look at population and you look at how many patrol officers or deputies you're supposed to have per population, there's a formula. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to go look at that formula. I, 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 you know, I know that there are cities out there that are comparable to us that have that have a lot more safety personnel, that have a lot more deputies and officers that are out there working. But then again, that city's in a different position. You know, I, I, I know that we're, we're busy here and our guys do, um, you know, they pride themselves on um, doing a good job, getting the calls quick. Uh, but, you know, they, they, do, they, do, they do take a, a licking when somebody calls and says, hey, why did it take you five hours to get to my call? Well, we, we, our guys get really good at explaining priority calls and, 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 hey, you know, without trying to sound like we're short people, they tell them that, that uh, you know their call. You know I had to go to the the, the, the traffic accident where somebody was bleeding. Or I had to go to the armed robbery, and you know it, it, it does get old doing that. But our guys manage, and 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 they make do. Um, you know we have a system here that's that's working right now. Can it be better? You know, and I, I say yeah, it could be. Um, and, and, and yeah, if we want to talk numbers, I definitely could do some more research and, and give you that number that I think would would help out. But yes. You mentioned two school resource officers. Is that matched by the schools or? I believe the school. Uh, 75 percent. 75 yeah. percent. Yeah, schools pay. It's uh, the elementary district okay. pays for those two. One on the east side, one on the west <laughs> side of the, of the town. And um, we pick up 25 percent of that cost. They pick up 75 percent of that cost. And high school? Uh, high school several years ago decided to do away with their school resource officers and instead hired additional private uh, security. Uh, that is a tremendous issue for us um, because when they have an incident, they call and Captain Schuler sends, sends his guys out there, or ladies too. Um, and, uh, you know, to say it's unfair, is, it may be unfair or maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, you know, other dis the other district, one of the other districts in the city obviously has stepped up and made a different decision. Um, but you know, I'm not here. I don't have the high school district budget in front of me to tell. Well, me to tell them what to do. Yeah, I'm kind of familiar with. The, well, I was at one time. I'm kind of familiar with that school resource officer. How it works at the elementary school district, high school district. My 
kind of question, my question is how is it working? Does anybody tell you what? My two deputies that are working in the well, school? Well, as compared to, if would we be better off to have the elementary school district hire their own deputies the way the high school did, or would the high school be better off to uh, support the high school didn't hire deputies, they hired private security. I meant private security, I know. Right. Uh, but, right. but which one works the best? Do we know? Do you know? Do you care? No, I do care. Uh, the, the, so. Our schools, where the two deputies are, they love our deputies. Okay. They, 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 they're, every time I see them, every time I, 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 I talk to anybody who's been working in the schools, they talk to them about um, how, how they appreciate, number one, that they're, that they're on the school campus, they're visible. And number two, they're always available when there's some type of incident that goes on and how they are, I don't want to say hands off, but they, but they make good discretionary decisions. Um, uh, when there's some type of enforcement action that needs to be taken. So they, they like that availability. Um, I do know when I was here in 07, 09, you talk about the deputies that were at the high school. Those deputies were busy non nonstop. And we do take note of how many times we go out to the high school. We were out there just last week for a threat that came in. And you know how school threats are. You know the active shooter type stuff that goes on. So we have to take those seriously. And we have to put a lot of a lot of time and, and I at least had two detectives and a deputy that worked that for about 16 hours until we vetted everything out and found out that it, that, that it was it wasn't a threat and, but it's what it was, it's what we have to do because we, we can't get caught off, off guard but uh, you know I, if the schools paid for it or if it was possible I would I would like to put it would be nice to put somebody back at the high school yeah we I've had that conversation with the superintendent uh, several times. Uh, I know that they look at it every year um, to see if they can fund that and they haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, they've got a lot of priorities just like we do. Well my final uh, comment, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot, uh, Captain Schuller, but um, so it's safe to say that uh, this is a high priority. Uh, it's a critical need. Uh, I understand the priorities. We can't do everything we'd like to do. So obviously uh, when I look at the budget every year, the first thing I look at is if we're adding deputies. I mean, just just what I zero in on. And I wish we could add two a year. That'd be that'd be ideal for me. But if we can't, maybe we can add one, or maybe not this year, but maybe next year. But I feel like we're we should have more, obviously. Um, every, and the number one comment I get from people that either live in the city or don't live in the city is crime. And, and I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not breaking any new ground here, but, uh, and I would just ask the city staff, if there's any way, if revenues keep increasing, if we could be a little creative um, and even add one next year, that'd be ideal. But, um, and again, it's nobody's fault, I'm not pointing any fingers, so just, just my comments going forward. Thank you, Councilor Member Negrete. Just one thing that you didn't catch at the beginning because you were a little bit late um, is at this point, the general fund, the overall budget is essentially balanced but it's not done yet. Um, we are still working on it. I go through Christian a little bit. But I can tell you right now, some of his uh, more uh, capital type of maintenance is, is going to come down uh, before we're done. Um, I haven't had a chance to get into the details on our two highest uh, revenue sources, sales tax and property tax. Sales tax a little bit, property tax not at all. Um, so I do expect some changes there, and I think by the time we have another meeting here in about a month, um, I, we want to deliver the council some additional funding. Um, you know, not that revenues are going to go up, expenditures are going to go down, or whatever that those, however they sort out. We want to come back with uh, some discretionary funds that isn't essentially what we've been doing, uh, so that you can maybe decide if you want to add. Uh, a sheriff's deputy or two. Okay. Um, if you want to increase our reserves, if you want to do some other things, so um, but it's still coming. Can you give us a rough idea of what it costs to add a deputy, realizing that there's things that come with it, like another car and so on? It's about a quarter million dollars. <laughs> That's probably about right. Yeah. Does yeah. every new deputy require a new vehicle? Um, no, not quite. Pro pro yeah, yeah, probably, probably not. Um, but it's not quite half. It's more than half. So if you if you hired two, you could probably get away with one new vehicle. If you hired three, you'd probably need two new vehicles. So if we did two, is four hundred thousand realistic number? 
No, no, quarter million dollars is essential. It's still a quarter million dollars. Yeah, yeah it's, that's what it is. It's difficult because some of the costs are, are embedded in you know, some of the administrative costs. Like CalCap is, which is the county's cost allocation plan, is what, 900000 or so this year? And it's based on 875 the admin cost? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah 75 CalCap is 875 this year. That's based on just under 6%, I think, of all personnel costs. So that would go up slightly. The number of vehicles would go up slightly. You know, all the risk management costs would go up slightly. Eventually, as you add deputies, you get into some supervision, have to add dispatch and corporal and dispatch, all sorts of things. So our rough number, it, it might be, you know, for one or two, you might get maybe a little bit closer to 225. but. It really is a quarter million dollars. So if we can find a half a million dollars, that would be an opportunity to have to actually. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have it tomorrow. <laughs> That's what we intend to when we come back in a month for the next workshop. Um, you know, it'll be and if we can find a million dollars, I don't think we can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, One thing, I, I I would be remiss. <laughs> Captain Chu is not going to tell you this. Um, well, he probably would if you asked him, but. Um, one of the things that I was presented with uh, with my annual meeting with the sheriff was that even though the deputy salaries went up 3% this year, 3% next year, 3% the year after, um, there was some retirement costs. They too are adjusting from 7.5 down to 7% on a go-forward projection basis. Um, because of some risk management costs that were high last year, they were able to save us this year, so the Schedule A didn't go up as much as we may have anticipated, but retirement costs alone for our existing deputies for the 18-19 budget is going to go up by about $1.3 million. And over the next five years, that grows to $2.5 million annually for it. That's strictly the retirement cost alone. Just keep that in mind as you add deputies. <laughs> You're committing yourselves to many, many years. I 100% agree that we need to add deputies. I'm not, not trying to talk you out of it, but uh, well, the money talks you out of it. Yeah, I, I think that retirement increase was, was based on uh, projections on how well their 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 investments right. work, and they're they're being very cautious. Mm -hmm. So if the investments don't come out the way they plan, that they're I think they're telling the contract city to be aware that yeah, this could happen. Yeah. Well, well, I'm going to interject here. I know we had a conversation. I was hoping you had a response. Um, I met with you not too long ago. I sent several emails at CC2, State Assembly. Um, so we talk a lot about crime, but I think also the need to have building relationships with the community would also offset some of that because there's a very many variables. So talking with a cop is what I brought in discussion. I know you were going to look into Highland or things of that nature. So I was wondering um, if you've done something like that or how is that in the works? Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. We're real close to kicking that off. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else for Captain Chu? Thanks, John. Um, the fire budget um, this year, uh, Captain Mendy, excuse me, sorry, Chief Mahia isn't here. Um, the increase is about uh, $350,000. Um, they would very much like us to uh, use some of the potential discretionary money that we're going to try to to scrape up here over the next month uh, on buying a new fire truck. Um, county fund? Yes, county fund. Um, the, the city would buy the truck. Um, uh, we all know that, uh, that we are in the process of reviewing options and expect to be back. Uh, in front of the council uh, on June 6th as well with options for fire services. Um, so the, the notion that you know we're going to give if we're going to give this to the county, why wouldn't we buy a truck is it's somewhat irrelevant. Uh, ultimately, the people of Victorville do need a new fire truck just as we do need additional deputies. Uh, and whether that is ultimately has a, a county seal on the side or a city seal on the side, the, the revenue source is essentially the same. So. Um, that's one of the other things that we're going to be looking at as we get a little bit closer to the end of the budget. But uh, that project is is nearing completion. Um, we had hoped to be in front of you a little bit earlier than now, and uh, unfortunately, because of some complications with it, um, we are going to have to wait until June um, 
mostly because of scheduling issues. Uh, we can't get all five of you here again until uh, early June, it looks like. Um, with that, who is left? Public Works, Water Engineering. Looks like Mr. Matthews is on his way. We're going to have to have a few minutes before the fact. Uh, yeah, you only have about three or four minutes because we're going to start the council meeting at five and uh, mm -hmm. we can't, I, I mean, we have enterprise fund, capital improvements, economic development, so we, we're going to have to have another study session, don't you think? Uh, we intended to have one now on the 6th of June. Um, I'd like to have one earlier than that. So would I. I. I'll ask the city clerk to look at scheduling options. I know when we've looked so far, it's, it's not pretty. So. Doug, you want to come up and just move quickly? <laughs> so Doug Matthews, Director of Public Works and Water. Um, several different divisions, about 125 employees. 70 public works, about 55 water. Uh, the good news for me is, is our general fund is very small. Uh, the bad news of that is we're the recipient of a lot of the uh, cost allocations. So we can get through this fairly quickly. If you want to flip to the general fund tab. To which fund? General, general fund. fund. We can hit that quickly. Back to the general fund. Good. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay. I don't know. Where's that? Yes. Yes. So if you look there, uh, under expenditure, you'll see public works. You'll see a million one going to a million two. It's a ten percent increase right there. That's basically fleet and graffiti. You see that down there? Mm -hmm. so on the summary shape, uh, summary page, right? Yes, general fund summary, very first page. On expenditures, we're the, almost at the bottom, public works. Mm -hmm. That is fleet and graffiti. Fleet's about a million dollar a year budget. Graffiti is about $87,000 a year O&M to 10%. It's basically some capital equipment, some personnel, not additional, just increased costs, and uh, a new truck for graffiti. So that handles public works in the general fund. Again, Doug, the 10 percent is budget to budget. You have the actual budget. It's, it's more like seven. Okay. Right. Actually, 2016 is a million, mm -hmm. and you're going to a million two eight. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll hit that million one this year. It'll be there. And what's in there again? Graffiti fleet and what? And graffiti. What? Fleet, fleet and graffiti. Fleet's roughly a million a year. It's cost allocated. Uh, graffiti's not well, cost allocated. What does actuals mean? Do they mean actual? Uh, so 2016? Is that 1617? No, we did 1616. That's in the books. Can I make a suggestion that when we, when we do these headings, one year doesn't help? We need to know that. that the fiscal year, 15 slash 16, 16 slash 17. And that's all we're working with, then. I've been thinking that those are our projections for two six for this current year, actual. No. And we're labeled FY 16 as in fiscal year ending 16. Yeah, but in the, in the income tax world, our fiscal year is start and then <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's wrong. Can we just put the both years in the heading? Is there any reason we can't do that? It helps. It, it helps. 15, 16, 16, 17. Yeah. So now we know. 15, 16. It's not 16, 17. Right. Okay. So we're together for a million one this year. We'll get them. It, it's pretty consistent. So the budget, the revised 17 budget, is probably pretty close to the current year actual. Getting close. That is the number we ought to be. Getting close. Right. Okay. Correct. So we have to get under. Is that because graffiti is only on water? It's not in parks or community services that doesn't pay for any of it? it why, is graffiti, why is graffiti under water? Why is it uh, because graffiti is under general fund covered by the whole city? But it's it's, it's not under water, it's under no, it's public, public works. works. It's under public right. works. <coughs> right, graffiti abatement is under public works. Okay. So whether it's a 
a water tank for a private citizen or a business, it's, it's all the same repeat crew but still for uh, $87,000 a year they run on. They do a tremendous job out there. You know, they are doing a terrific yeah. job. I'll be going to work and I see graffiti and uh, by the time I'm going home, it's gone. I mean, they do a terrific job. Yeah, we, we get good uh, citizen engagement on that. Right for stuff. Back, back up. Yeah. Certainly. You got a total operating budget of a hundred and thirteen million dollars. Where are you going to now? I'm back in the public works. Public works department itself. So well, well, but in the general million. fund, right. you got a million. Right. So your department spans a bunch of different. We're headed there. I would just start at the front. All you're doing is trying to tell us what the general fund piece of your total That's budget. all this was. This is the general fund. So when I talk about the different divisions, we're going to look at them by fund, and that's where they're separated in this book. So when we look at the different funds, then we can look at what they're uh, comprised of. So this is just a very small piece of the general fund. There's a little increase. On and it's only graffiti? And fleet. Fleet. Yeah. Fleet. Fleet's about a million of them. Fleet. You mean? Uh, fleet operations. Vehicles? Yes. Equipment and vehicles. They're in the general fund. Yes, but they're cost allocated to all the departments who have uh, vehicles and equipment. What? Yeah. At least 100% cost allocated out to the departments based on what equipment and vehicles they have. So whoever you so the cost allocation revenue money picks up that portion of the fleet that gets spread. Exactly. Right. But it's it's just collected in the general fund. It's a general fund department. Okay. Well, my departments pay for a lot of that fleet anyway, a million dollars. It comes out of water, sewer, different divisions of that nature. We can uh, flip to the public works tab. Yes, <coughs> that Pardon me? Public works right? tab. There's a tab there, public works. Yes, yeah, the summary. Yes, yeah, start on the summary page. Um, you'll see. My two departments there are public works and water. Public department summary. So under public works, you'll see a essentially a three million dollar increase. Um, that is is essentially in the sewer fund. It's 2.2 million for CCTV. What's that? The uh, cameraing system so that are the entire city. We're having to go out and look at all the. Uh, Ms. Lemons is right. Please avoid the acronym. Yeah, we're not that sure. And uh, it's about 600,000 of the BBWA passenger. So there's about 2.8 million. The rest is in legal cost allocation and some other things. So that $3 million, if you look at all the public works departments, is essentially you can look at it as a, as a sewer increase as far as that goes. As, as a uh, high overview. On the water side, if you look, uh, it's just a slight increase on there. What in the world is that? 92 million? Is that 92 million. We were looking, that's some fund transfers. That's some, what was that, you know? Transfers out, so we'll have to get your information. Is that, on that when we move the sewer treatment, treatment plant, plant certain things? Probably, yeah. We saw some 30 million and 36 million dollar transfers. See, I was looking at that thinking that was his current fiscal year. Yeah, but it's still uh, the year before. Yeah, if Pat Rosenberg was still here, she'd have the answer out of her head, but I, I would imagine that's the. the it looks like about the right number. Yeah. Yeah. IWW complete this one. The Industrial Wastewater Treatment Facility, or treatment plant at SCLA. Okay. So, largely out of out of all the public works divisions, they're mostly flat except for the sewer. Because you look at $3 million increases coming out of sewer, the rest are generally flat. So how much money is in sewer? Since we have sewer fees we collect it, how much money is? Why don't we have sewer separated? <coughs> Why don't we have back, it'll be in here. Oh, okay. I just thought on the very first page of it. It'll be in the enterprise funds. Yeah. <laughs> so flip to the enterprise fund. And it'll be on the second page. Sanitary? Yes, 425. And that's a shared fund. As you can see, expenses by group between quite a few departments and divisions. Uh, my end of that is uh, 
that I highlighted today was the sewer portion. Uh, I do have wastewater treatment as well, but we took that out of that fund. That's why that zero was put into its own fund into uh, 412. What are the charges now? In charges for? I'm sorry? In 425, charge for services. Sanitary. You're down one percent. Am I in the wrong place? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're going to write about 425. Looking at the 15-16 year, mm -hmm. then this current year. Yeah. Why are they down on those two million? Oh, so, well, the current year is 17. That's 11.5. Right. Projected year is 11.4. And right. I think one of the reasons uh, it went down from 16 to 17 was some of that revenue started going to the uh, treatment plant. I'm pretty sure. Is that right, Keith? Yeah, that looks like that. But we charge the customer the same, regardless of where the flow is. You'll just see it in the other fund. It'll be in 412. You'll see it as fund 412 instead of fund 412. The portion of, that goes to the to our treatment plan doesn't come to the sewer fund. It goes to the wastewater treatment fund. Okay. Uh, how do you the portion that goes to BBWRA comes to the sewer fund and then is Bill and the sewer fund then pays BBWRA for the treatment. So that sort of reflects our, our diversion. Correct. And Down below. You have a 218 study to say how much the fee should be so you know how much to send to BBWRA and how much we keep? Yeah, it's underway and we'll be having workshops and all that will be coming to council. That study done. won't tell us what to send to BBWRA. No. That'll it's tell us what we're going to charge customers. Correct. Right now we charge customers all the same amount, which is based on the BWRA rate. And how to blend the rate, and how, the way, how it needs to be structured. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of Well, you have to, if you charge a sub customer, you have to keep it separate. You have to know how much of the rate goes to what uh, That's the requirement 218. So, if you have, and I know it, it, it's difficult because it's made up with commercial use that all go there, residential use. Our cost, pumping stations, lift stations. But I'd really like to see the study. Yeah, that study is That's in gone. underway. It's about ninety percent complete. Good. We're on the average. We need to stop. We need to see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. We. Yeah. We. I agree. We got um, seven minutes. I'm through. Yeah. One. One thought that I had. I had stepped out myself. Um, one thought that I had, and this is really a question for you, Councilmember Kennedy. Is um, we'd originally thought we were going to have a second workshop on the sixteenth of May. I know that you're unavailable on that night. Um, so, how comfortable would you be if we had one without you? Okay. 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 If you're okay with that, we would keep that workshop for the 16th. I'm the problem. I can't help it. You're generally the problem. We usually the problem. We can stop right now, and it probably would be good to, to continue that. And of course, Councilman Kennedy. As always, available. I have a lot of questions. I don't need the board people here with those, but I want answers. And so I'm assuming for us who have questions, just direct them to you. Direct them to me. We'll and get you get them back, and then that way on the 16th, yep. I don't have to take up the whole week and answer yep. questions. Yep. Yep. And we will uh, make sure that the entire council gets the, answer, the questions and answers that anybody submits. All right. Thank you. Okay, have public comments still. Oh, okay, so we have public comments. Uh, there are any. You should ask for public comment if there's any. Uh, okay, we do have public comments. I don't know if we have anyone that has. Uh, I don't have any cards. I don't have anyone that wants to speak. Yeah. We should adjourn to the 16th. So this meeting will be adjourned, adjourned. till 3 p.m. 3 p.m. on the 16th. Uh, May 16th. May 16th for another budget workshop. So this meeting is adjourned till May uh, 16th. 16th. 3 p.m. Uh, that's 3 p.m. And the uh, meeting is adjourned. Okay.